This function has um, three inputs and one output, so we can't visualize the graph, but we can look at level sets. In particular, if we look at this level set where the output is four, then we have a hyperboloid. Now, if I rearrange this, I can see that it's a hyperboloid of one sheet because no, no matter what the value of z that I have, I just have a circle. So whether z is positive or negative or even zero, I have a circle. The minimum circle is a circle of radius 2 in the xy plane. That's what happens when z equals 0. Um, and then the circles just gradually get wider and wider. They are um, hyperbolas, so they approach an asymptote. They're kind of asymptotic to a cone here. So we've got this hyper, oops, probably a little bit wider there, this hyperboloid of one sheet. That's just one level set, so we can visualize this function as, as a bunch of nested hyperboloids. When, z e or when the output is equal to zero, then we get actually a cone, and then if, when um, the output goes less than zero, we start to get hyperboloids of two sheets. But this is the, the basic picture that we're talking about. I kind of missed there as well. All right, it's getting worse. Um, so here's our hyperboloid. Now, we want to find the tangent plane at a particular point. This is actually a point on this particular level set, because if we make x2, y1, and z1, we have 4 plus 1 minus 1, so that's 4. So this is a point on that level set. Now, in order to get the equation of a tangent plane, so over here at 2, 1, 1, there's going to be a tangent plane to this hyperboloid. In order to get the equation of a tangent plane, we, if we had the normal, we could do that pretty easily. Well, the gradient is going to show you the direction of steepest ascent, right? So that's going to be the fastest way to get off of this level set, which is going to be to go perpendicular to the level set. So the gradient will actually give us the normal to this plane. So let's go ahead and calculate the gradient. The partial with respect to x is 2x, the partial with respect to y is 2y, and the partial with respect to z is minus 2z. So at our particular location, 2, 1, 1, then our gradient is 4, 2, negative 2. Now, to get the equation of the plane, we have the normal. So there's our normal, 4, 2, negative 2. That's going to be our normal to the tangent plane. And we have a point on the plane, so we can get the equation. Because here's our normal vector. If we make any vector from a po another point on the plane to this given point, If this vector is going to lie in that tangent plane, then its dot product with the normal has got to be 0, because any vector that lies in the tangent plane has got to be perpendicular to the normal of the tangent plane. So we get 4 times x minus 2 plus 2 times y minus 1 plus 2 times z minus 1 equals 0. Now just because these are all divisible by 2, I might make the numbers a little bit better if I divide by 2 first. I divide by 2 here. I guess there's no point in writing the parentheses. We get 2x and y and z, and then our constants are negative 4, and negative 1 would make negative 5, and then um, minus, oops, I dropped the negative here. I'm not supposed to be negative. OK, so we're going to have 2x plus y minus z. So then we're going to have negative 4, and negative 1 would make negative 5. Minus minus 1 would give us back negative 4. So move that negative 4 over to the right, and we have this for the equation of the plane. Fun to um, use Maple to sketch this plane. So I'm going to load the plotting package, so with pl plots. Um, and now we need to make our first plot can be the actual level set, which we said was this hyperboloid of one sheet. Let's see, probably the best way to draw this hyperboloid is to use uh, cylindrical to parametrize our hyperboloid. Let's see, we have um, x squared plus y squared equals um, z squared plus 4. So that tells us that the radius um, is equal to the um, square root of 4 plus z squared. So we can use that as our radius in our cylindrical coordinates. Remember, in cylindrical coordinates, x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta, and z is z. 
and let's plot this um, from theta equal 0 to 2 pi so that we can rotate all around and we'll let z go from I don't know maybe um, negative negative uh, what negative 9 to 9 that will create our hyperboloid now we can create oops I forgot the command which is plot 3d <clears throat> Now we'll create a second plot. I'll call it P2. And this time we'll use the equations for our plane. Our plane says that if we solve for z here, z is going to be 2x plus y minus 4. So let's go ahead and rather than parameterize it, we'll just say z equals 2x plus y minus 4 and then we'll just make sure that we're in a range around our x value of 2 so let's let x go from 1 to 3 and we had a y value of 1 so we can let y go from 0 to 1 and in plot 3d you don't give a name to the output variable okay now display plots 1 and 2 and let's see if we get anything it's working hard Hmm. So we got our hyperboloid, and looks like we got a bit of a tangent plane there. Well, it goes from, oh, whoops, I wanted to make sure that that was a range around the y value. Okay, now we get a better tangent plane. We can see that, yes, it is tangent there. That might be nice maybe to change the style on on one surface or the other maybe we could um, make the make the hyperboloid nice and smooth so I'm going to do style equal patch no grid Let's pa pass that style parameter there uh, yeah, that's okay we've got our got our tangent plane now nice